So this video we're going to talk about Darwin's idea for evolution by natural selection. So let's start by really defining those two terms. We're going to see that evolution is just a broad term talking about any time a population changes over many generations. Natural selection is not quite the same as evolution. Natural selection is one of the causes of evolution. As we'll see later in this unit, there are other forces that can also cause evolution, but natural selection is certainly one of the most important ones. So when we think about natural selection, I'm going to want you guys to be able to think about there being four broad steps to evolutionary change caused by natural selection. And what I want to do in this video is I just want to introduce those four steps. I want you eventually to be able to identify those four steps and to apply them to a sample scenario like I'm going to do in this video. So um, what are the four steps? And we'll kind of introduce them one by one. Uh, you need four things. So maybe uh, selective pressure and genetic variety are what I like to think of as the requirements for change. You need some kind of pressure making it hard to survive, and then you need um, differences among your individuals. And if you have those two things, then in the short term, you're going to have individuals either selected for or against um, in one generation. And if that continues to happen over many generations in the long term, then you'll eventually see the evolutionary change. So that's just a really quick introduction to the four steps. And what I'd like to do is, is, is hit those one by one. Let me just introduce a, a real life scenario to you. So I actually found this journal article um, talking about how fish species have evolved to become smaller in size over about 17 years. Uh, these biologists actually measured changes in the fish size um, year after, generation after generation, and they're reporting their findings. They want to argue in the article that maybe human fishing has driven this evolution of smaller size. And so let's kind of talk about that. Um, if we start by thinking of the selective pressure first, um, what is that? Again, I just want to argue that that's just anything that's making survival difficult for individuals. Um, sometimes that can be an external factor to the population, like some kind of predator um, is, is eating individuals, or maybe some kind of disease is making individuals sick and causing them to die. Um, maybe sometimes the selective pressure can actually come within the population too. Maybe sometimes you can just say, well, there's just too many individuals in the population and there's just not enough food and resources for everybody to survive. And so that might drive uh, the evolution as well. Maybe in our particular example, if we were to think about a population of fish, maybe it's the human fishermen themselves that, that serves as the selective pressure here. We're kind of like the predator that's maybe if we catch big fish, um, then we tend to keep them and kill them. Sometimes if we catch really small fish, we tend just to throw them back and they survive. So we're making survival difficult for some individuals in the population. Okay, step two. You also need genetic variety among the individuals um, in the population. So maybe the relevant genetic variety here. Oh, first to talk a little bit about what that means. That just means individuals need to be phenotypically different from each other. They just need to have um, different observable traits, um, obvious things that make them different in their environment. And just they have to be genetic differences because we're going to see that the whole point of this is that if you have good traits, then you need to be able to pass them on to your offspring when you reproduce them. Okay, so maybe the relevant uh, genetic variety in this scenario is just the different sizes of fish. Just to keep things really simple, we're just going to assume that there are two sizes here, big and small, although it, it probably is a little bit um, more varied than that. Okay, so maybe just one difference among fish is that there are differences in size. Okay, if you have a selective pressure and you also have genetic variety, then you can start thinking about selection. And so let's talk now about what it means to be selected for or against. If you are selected against as an individual, we're saying that whatever traits you have make you less likely to survive 
and most importantly, less likely to reproduce. You're producing fewer offspring, you're passing on your genes less often to the next generation, and that's really the crucial thing you need to say. Um, on the other hand, if you're selected four, that means maybe you have good traits, and so you survive better. And again, it's not just survival. Um, those who survive longer in nature tend to reproduce more offspring. You're passing more copies of your genes on to the next generation. And so let's maybe see that at work. If we think about the fishermen catching fish, um, again, let's say that the f individuals who are big are caught and killed. So if I, if I show this individual as being killed, it's no longer available to reproduce. Um, if he catches this fish as well, he maybe kills that fish. If he catches the small fish, then maybe he just throws it back and it continues to survive. And maybe he catches this fish as well. And so let's say that those individuals who are gone were selected against, and let's say everybody else survives, so they happen to reproduce offspring. Um, so I'm just gonna show it this way. I know that fish don't actually reproduce this way, but hopefully you get the idea. So let's just say every survivor happens to reproduce, and let's say that they actually reproduce two offspring, and then let's say that everybody in here is generation two. So if you're actually counting all the fish, you could recalculate your percentages and maybe now the percentages look like this. A little bit of a shift because on average, the smaller fish um, survived and reproduced more than the bigger fish, okay? And so just to really cause a, an evolutionary change, we maybe posit a fourth step that maybe this kind of selection of individuals has to occur generation after generation to really cause a noticeable change. So um, um, it's just this idea that those who, who continue to have the good traits continue to out-reproduce those with the less favored traits. And so if we imagine the smaller fish continuing to out-reproduce the bigger fish, then maybe after a few generations, it really starts to become noticeable. And so that's what those scientists measured when they reported this in real life. So maybe after many generations, maybe most of the fish are now having the favored trait being smaller because they evade fishermen better. Okay, um, just some final notes in this video. The biggest misconception we have among students is they wanna say that individuals themselves change, which never happened in this scenario, right? There was never a bigger fish that kind of told itself, uh-oh, I'm too big, I'd better evolve and become small so that I survive better. Um, fish were just either big or small as individuals and they either survived better or they didn't. So the change was not among individuals, the change occurred in the overall population over many generations, okay? Um, and so what we want you to be able to do in summary is to be able to identify those four steps and also to be able to apply them to a given scenario, which we will practice more in class.